Hey guys, Color Out Camper Man Brian here. Well, I'm super excited today because today I am picking up my Kimrong YH14 mini excavator. I drove 10 and a half hours from Southern Colorado to Muskogee, Oklahoma to pick this up. I'm gonna talk with the guys here at Kimron a little bit about their excavators and then show you everything there is to know about this awesome little excavator. Uh, so I'm here with Ron, uh, he's the owner of Kimron. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just checking out his facility and all the excavators here. Yeah. These are sweet rigs. Yeah, so we, we have a huge selection here right now. This is the RH14-3 that we're leaning on here. This one's got the hard plumb lines. It's uh, similar to the YH14. That's what you're getting today, right? Yeah. I haven't yep. went out there and checked it out yet. I better yeah. check it out, right? Yeah, no, it looks, it looks exactly <laughs> like this guy here. There you so. go. So you got the, the YH14, also hard plumb lines, and uh, got the cylinder protection there. And of course, thumb. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. All of our machines, they come with the hydraulic thumb. That's going to be just no worries. It's standard. Yep. You don't have to worry about it. It's it's there. And then the tons of attachments, yep. a lot of that there. Um, I haven't looked at your ticket. You get any attachments today? Yeah, so I got uh, I got the 8-inch bucket and then the ripper. Okay. Because in Colorado, we got some big rocks. And I'm, there you I go. don't want to mess up my, my nice bucket here. So I got the ripper to hopefully, yeah. you know, be able Ripper's to get some gonna be big great. Any trees out there? Yeah, oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Roots there you go, so if you want to pop some roots and everything, yeah. just get in there, hook them with that ripper and work your way around the tree, Yeah, push her on over. Well, know? one thing I really liked, I gotta say about the units when I was looking at it and when I decided on camera on was the fact that you guys had the thumb come right. with the unit. I mean, it's such that, a huge thing. Yeah, that and the thumb actually is set up to fold back all the way. Mm -hmm. um, I know some of the competitor brands out there, they've got the thumb where it's on a fixed rod right here. Yeah. Well, for one, it's a thin rod, you can bend it. I've seen it before, a guy sent me a picture asking for parts. Yeah. So another thing, we get tons of calls from guys buying those machines, they need parts. I'm like, guys, we have the upgraded pump. Yeah. So our pump's not gonna fit it because your mm -hmm. housing is gonna be a little bit different. Yeah. So you're gonna be drilling and tapping and what if the spline don't fit, all that. Mm -hmm. But anyways, back to the story there. So they've got these thumbs that are fixed and they're at an angle. You try to dig with it. We did it in the AGT video a while back. You're reaching out and you're hitting the thumb on the ground oh, first. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can get down there and pull the pins out, and move the thumb up a little bit. Who wants but to do that? Who wants to do that, <laughs> right? Exactly. Nobody so much easier to, to hit your foot pedal or, you know, Hit the lever, lever and pedal, whatever. <laughs> Put it down, actuate your bucket, pick stuff up. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So, yeah, another great feature about the machine, you've got your three-way valve right there. So mm -hmm. you do get a power attachment like an auger, a jackhammer down the road. You're gonna be able to hook into that, turn that, turn on the other side, boom, you're live. Yep. You're going, you're ready to go drill holes, break concrete, whatever you're using that day, so. So one of the big questions I had, I know, when I was looking at the mini excavators online, I was like, okay, what's the main difference between Kimron and the other stuff out there? And why would I want to go with Kimron? So from, from your perspective, what right. are the, the big gotcha. differences and why, why would someone want to choose you guys? Uh, let me show you something, actually. We keep yeah. this in here. So one thing, we have a uh, customized bell housing. You're going to find this. This is our 14 series bell housing here. And uh, this is made for us. This is a Parker pump. Basically, Parker pump fits right in, bolts right up. Mm -hmm. Our pump fits right in, bolts right up. Spline's the same, mm -hmm. so that's a, that's a big key. It's got a spline fit in with the uh, shaft on the motor and all that. That's one of the differences. So you, right there alone, you have parts interchangeability. Boom, right there, you can go get a Parker pump put on there. You can come back to us, get one of our pumps. Our yep. pumps do have about, they do about half a GPM more than the Parker. So, okay. gotcha. cool thing about that is that parts interchangeability. So that's the pump alone. Also, mm -hmm. drive motors back here that turn your tracks. Mm -hmm. Same thing, you have a bolt pattern that matches up. That's important, because 10 years from now, God forbid, what if we're not here, you know? Mm -hmm. You're gonna be able to get parts for your machine and still keep going. So we plan on being here, guys. We have tons of parts. We have a warranty. We have service. You're right here. We're talking right now. Yep. And you know that's a big thing. So next, 
Inside of here, you have a spool valve housing, mm -hmm. and we spend a little more money on that, and it is machined better to where you have smoother operations. I'm sure you guys have watched videos out there on YouTube of the lower price machines, auction machines, stuff like that, and <laughs> they shake really bad. It's almost kind of jerky. It's almost comical. Yeah. You know, I mean, the guy sitting here rocking back and forth. Two things. One, it's because of that spool valve housing. Two, because it doesn't have a counterweight on it. All of these 14 series machines, we put a hefty counterweight as big as we can fit on there. That yeah. way you've got a well-balanced machine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what makes us different primarily, that mm -hmm. and the service. Yeah. Well, so. we talked off camera, but I know every time I've called you guys or texted you guys, you guys have always been super responsive. Um, right. Which was huge because I had looked at getting one of the auction rigs uh, at a different place and I asked the gal and it was at a, a like actual dealership that sold like side by sides and stuff but they right. had gotten them on auction they said there was no warranty right. sold as is you know right. and uh, yeah I mean after I had looked at that and yeah I was gonna be saving a little bit of money but Right. It didn't have some of the upgraded things that you talked about. It didn't have a hydraulic thumb. And then there was no backing. It was just, that yeah. was it, you know? Call 1-800-CHINA. Yeah, exactly. And get parts. Well, who yeah. do I call? And I looked on yeah. Facebook, uh, Marketplace, Craigslist. It was the same thing. There was people right. that were selling them a little bit cheaper. It was only like a thousand dollars difference. Right. And it didn't, I mean, even the hydraulic thumb, I was looking alone, if I were to buy that and add separately, that was 400 bucks. Yep, and exactly. then you don't have any backing. It's no. like, well, that's really not worth the savings. And then right. the upgraded spool and, you know, yeah. the pump that you talked about. I mean, it just, it made more sense to me just to go with you guys. Right, and you, you can know. still buy an excavator here with the Cameron branding and the, uh, you know, all that stuff that comes along with it for under 10 grand. Yeah. So we're not gonna be able to meet their prices because they're they're basically doing it a different way. They're building them as yeah. cheap as possible. They're lightweight. And uh, over on our channel, we'll have an upcoming video soon. We're introducing a, uh, a non Cameron brand. <laughs> it's kind of scary, right? <laughs> um, guys, uh, it'll be the same deal. It's, it's not going to have a warranty, but it's going to be super cheap. We're going to yeah. give you that option. We did order some parts in, so we threw some parts on the shelf. That way guys can get parts for that machine. Yeah. They're still, they're not going to interchange with like the AGTs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I hate to say, if you, the AGTs are the AGTs. That's yeah. their thing. If you can get a hold of them, good for them. <laughs> I hear different stories though. Yeah. Good gosh. Man, we get like... 10, 20 phone calls a day. Oh. Hey, I've got an AGT and uh, I'm having this problem, I'm having that problem. Either they're selling a lot of machines or they're having a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what's what there, but. <laughs> Probably uh, a combo of both. <clears throat> but, and, and I hate it for the guys. I mean, they didn't know about us. Yeah. Some old boy was selling it in the backyard or like you said, somebody yeah. had picked them up at auction and you know, they, they kind of got screwed over. AGT is just not here, yeah. I hate to say. I mean, they're in China. Yes, they have a warehouse, I think, but mm -hmm. the parts support's not there, else we wouldn't be getting these calls. Yeah, so. for sure. All right, guys, well, I made it back to Colorado. We're here at our property. We're at about 10,000 feet in elevation and it's an absolutely gorgeous day here on uh, December 20th. But uh, but anyhow, so um, the guys at k &R Equipment, I do want to tell you, they are great guys. So everybody that was there, they're very knowledgeable. If I had any questions about anything, they're very helpful. Their communication was great before the sale and even after the sale. I did have one issue with my seatbelt when uh, I got the unit, after a couple hours, it seemed like the button had broken. So I reached out to Austin. He was the guy that helped me with the unit originally, told him about it. Within two business days, he had already shipped out a new seat belt to me. And that was one of the main reasons I went with Kimron versus AGT or FF Industrial or whatever these other auction units are, is the fact that they have support. You know, they carry a one year powertrain warranty on these units. And just based on my experience thus far, 
um, I would think if you have any issues with it, they'll definitely help you out. They always answer their phone, emails, texts, whatever. Their communication has been great. And like I said, that's one of the main driving factors is why I went with Kimron over, you know, the other auction excavators out there. So I'm going to show you guys every aspect in detail about the excavator. One thing I want to talk about before then though is hauling this thing. Cause some of you guys may be wondering, okay, I want to get this excavator, but how do I haul this thing around? Well, I've just been using our five and a half by 10 foot uh, utility trailer that we actually purchased for our UTV. And I have some Ericsson uh, tie down systems in there. And this actually fit perfectly between those and um, driving it from Muskogee, Oklahoma, all the way back home and up to our property here, it was about 700 miles. And that trailer did fantastic. I am pretty much maxing out the weight capacity on the trailer. So if I was gonna be doing more, uh, you know, driving this thing around town and loading it and offloading it constantly, I would maybe get something that's gonna, you know, have a higher weight rating and stuff like that. Cause like I said, I am pretty much maxing out the trailer, but our trailer has worked absolutely great. Uh, we plan on keeping this up here at our property. It's gonna be uh, staying in our 20 foot shipping container, which is another reason why I went with this unit versus uh, a couple of the other uh, units that Kimron offers. This one fits perfectly in our 20 foot shipping container. All right guys, now we're gonna talk about every aspect of the excavator. I've put about two and a half hours on it. Um, I know Ron had walked you guys through some of the main features of it, but I wanted to be able to give you guys my perspective from operating it here at our property. Really the only couple things I've done so far with it is I've started to make a trail up to the top of our hill here. Um, so I've used it for that and then just building that ramp up to our shipping container. So I haven't put a ton of usage on so far. It's winter here at 10,000 feet. I'm lucky enough that we're even able to do work <laughs> uh, because we're on a south facing slope and it's, you know, it snows a lot, a uh, decent amount here, but uh, you know, with us being south facing, it's not too bad. All right, so here is the bucket. It is a nice big 16 inch bucket. It moves a lot of dirt. Um, it's really nice and all the teeth are replaceable have bolts in on here and everything which is really nice i did get an eight inch bucket as well as the ripper now to remove the bucket there's just a couple of pins here this here and here and you just have to take off these nuts here and then just take your pins out so i did not go for the quick attach system i figured that was relatively easy and shouldn't be too big of an issue here is the hydraulic thumb. I absolutely love having this. With the YH model, this is operated by a foot pedal, and this is heavy duty. I mean, if you look at the thickness of this, it is a half inch thick. So all the, you know, the bucket and the boom and everything, it is definitely heavy duty. Now, one thing I have to say with the thumb, it does go out of the way here fully, so that's not an issue, but it doesn't go a full, 180 degrees down. So I don't know for sure if that's common on excavators um, or not. I've only read excavators a couple times and I honestly can't remember if that's standard or not. One thing that's nice are our grease zerks pretty much everywhere, which is super nice. Here is the three-way valve. Uh, right now we are hooked up to have the um, foot pedal operate the thumb. If I want to operate the jackhammer or the auger, I'd hook it up here and I wouldn't have to remove the thumb. So that is super nice. Definitely like that. Looks like this came with some extra bolts. I'm not exactly sure where these go to. So you can see there are grease zerks pretty much everywhere. Uh, the YH14 does come with the hard plumb lines, which I really like. A couple of Bobcat x I've rented before had this and uh, I do really like that. The LED light does come uh, fully protected, which I like both on the front and then it's encased in this, which is really nice because as you can see, we have a lot of trees and stuff here and I'm going to be using it up there and it's, you know, it's nice to have this additional protection both on the light and then in front of this cylinder too. Now this cylinder uh, protector, you know, as you can see, it does kind of move. So when you're on full throttle, it does kind of move. It doesn't rattle or anything um, and you can remove it easily if you need to you know, remove this cylinder or replace it or whatnot. 
So as you can see, here's all the uh, hard plumb lines coming down, nice and protected, which again, I like with having trees and stuff here. And then I do have the side swing model. So here is, uh, you know, the pivot point for that and everything. And again, everything is just heavy duty. I mean, really thick, you know, I mean, it seems really good for sure. Down here at the bottom, you know, again, this is for the uh, hydraulic for the the um, for the blade here. Um, you got Zerk Zerks there. This thing is solid. I mean, this blade here is two inches thick, and it is literally solid steel. Um, it does have some real nice tie down points which I really like. This is how I use it, or what I use to secure uh, it down to my trailer. So yeah, these tie downs are super nice. One thing that this model does not have is some tie down points on the tracks here. A couple of the other models do have that. So I don't know if they will eventually do that or not, but they do have some loops here. Um, so that's one kind of critique, I guess you could say, because in order for me to tie down the back, I just put a strap over um the rear track here and go across and uh that's how they told me to do it which seems to work but it would be a lot nicer if i had a hook right there here is a level for the hydraulic fluid which is nice that you can see that and i, I believe the access to it to be able to fill it is right here so here's your little plate saying the serial number day manufacturer the model the weight and then we have a couple other grease uh, zerks there so we do have a foot pedal to operate the thumb. If you push forward, it will close the thumb. If you push back, it will open it up. Now, one thing I do have to say about this is if you have big feet or are wearing large boots, it's a little awkward kind of getting your foot in here. So that's just kind of one note uh, to make. Here is the other foot pedal that's for your other auxiliary, again, for the jackhammer or for the auger. So we do have an updated plate versus like the basic RHG14. Uh, it gives you a little bit more protection. And then one of the main reasons I got the YH14 is this rollover protection system. So this is a true rollover protection versus just a canopy. And as you can see, I have very mountainous terrain here, very steep terrain. And this was a safety feature I wanted to make sure that I had. When I rock this, it rocks the entire machine, like when I move it back and forth. On some of the other models, if I were to do the same thing, the canopy would only move. Um, and those are, they're just canopies. This is actually a, a rollover protection, which again was one of the main reasons I got this model. It also has a steel roof and then it's got these little rain gutters as well too. All right, so now looking at the uh, center console, here is your battery cutoff switch, which I really like that aspect. Don't have to worry about killing the batteries, uh, which you do have a monitor. I don't know how well you can read that, but it says we're at 12.6 volts. We do have a little hour meter, which says we're at 2.9 hours. Um, the light switch is over here. So this is for the little boom light. And then here is your ignition switch, and you get two keys with the excavator. This control right here moves your blade up and down. And then these two sticks operate your boom, booms it out, curls your bucket, and spins you around. These two here are your drive for your tracks. One thing I do have to say about these versus other excavators that I operated, if you are tracking to a long distance, these kind of get a little tiring after a while for sure. One of the other models that they have in the 14 series, it looks like they have nicer um, sticks and I think that may be worth it for sure. So I don't know if they're gonna do that eventually on the other models, but like I said, if you're tracking for a while, these are not super comfortable. These sticks are just fine, they're not a problem. And then here is the button for the side swing operation. So if you flip that, and then you, you turn with this, instead of rotating you all the way around, it'll move your boom, and then you switch it back, and then you're uh, back to twirl, twirling around. All right, so looking at the seat here, this is on the YH model. Um, I do have an adjustment here, so you can move forward and back, and then a lumbar, so you can recline your, your seat there, which is really nice, and then there is an adjustment for the headrest as well. 
One kind of quirky thing is they put the plastic on and that must have screwed like the back onto this. So <laughs> we do have uh, plastic coming out. So uh, in order to get that out, looks like I'll have to take the screws off and remove that. Um, here is the seat belt. Um, all the models, I believe, come with seat belts. All right, over on the right side here, this is your throttle and then this is your choke. There's cables that go down directly to the engine on these. So if you did have issues, it looks like you could easily replace that. And then with the YH model, I do have a couple wing nuts that go right here to secure the seat. At first, I didn't really like that because I thought it was going to be kind of a pain to remove those, to fill it up with gas. But I actually like it because in transit, you throw those in there and it'll make sure that your seat stays down. Now, when I'm operating this thing, I do have them out. That way I can just lift the seat up easily and then I can access the gas tank if I need to. All right, so this is powered by a 14 horsepower Briggs & Stratton gas engine. This is one of the main reasons I was interested in this excavator is because this is essentially a large lawnmower gas engine and I have worked on these myself before and I know how to do the maintenance on these type of engines and parts are readily available. I mean it's a Briggs and Stratton which that's absolutely great. Here you can see the cables coming down from the throttle and the choke. They go right down to the throttle and the choke on uh, on the engine. There is a fuel cutoff um, down there as well which I like to use before putting it away. I keep the engine running, turn it off, and then you let the engine run out of all the fuel that's in that carburetor. And I found that really helps make sure that your carburetor doesn't get gummed up. However, it's kind of hard to access that little switch. And that's probably one of my beefs with, uh, with the engine in general is just the access. Fueling up with gas is even a little weird. You have to put a funnel here. And I know a lot of excavators like this with the gas engine are identical to this so that's one thing to get used to but the access for the maintenance is definitely one thing i'm not uh or i'm a little concerned about because you do have these vents here which pop off and give you a little bit of access but to take these panels off it looks to be a complete pain in the butt for sure looks like you have to take a lot of different bolts off i have taken this uh vent off before to see what the ch um, carburetor access was because I may put a high elevation uh, carb jet kit on here um, if Brig & Stratton offers it. I still got to look into that. But in order to take off this whole back panel, it looks to be a real big pain in the butt. I'm not going to lie. So um, that's one thing I'm going to have to figure out. And maybe it's easier um, than I'm thinking. Um, but on this side, there's a little bit better access because you got this big vent here, but, and you might be able to see the fuel cutoff switch in there. But um, the model up from this, um, I don't know which one it is, but the model up from this, it does have panels that swing open, and I think that would be a big game changer as far as maintenance goes. So one thing that's nice about the Cameron excavators is, is this big counterweight and back. Again, very heavy duty, solid. I'll show you guys. This is, uh, I believe, 3 8 thick steel. And then it runs underneath as well, too. Now, here is the drain for the oil. Um, again, access is not great. What I'll probably end up doing is you can get oil extractors, and I'll probably end up getting that. Um, and then for the dipstick area where you fill it, I have a funnel that you can load up that has a valve on there. Cause again, the access is just not very good. Uh, you can kind of see the dipstick hopefully down in there, the little yellow guy, that's where you would fill up the oil. So there is a floor mat that comes with it. Uh, you do have to strap this thing down while transporting it. So that's just one thing to make note of, uh, because it's stuck on here. It looks like they actually put it on, uh, they put the rollover protection over this thing, so you can't really take this thing off. Uh, there is a panel under here to be able to access your battery, and then on the other side, that's where your hydraulic fill is, and it looks like you can take off the entire floor with maybe about eight bolts or so. All right, so now I am gonna tell you guys uh, what the decibels are on this thing, tell you how loud this thing is, get her started up.
So at idle, this thing's about 65 decibels. Maybe 58, about six feet away. It's probably mid throttle. Here's all out, about 75 decibels. So not quite sure how that uh, compares to other excavators out there as far as noise level go. But if you're at idle or um, mid throttle, it really isn't that bad. And Kimron, if you look at a lot of the videos that Ron does, he says that you can operate this thing basically just above idle because it has the upgraded pump. And I have found that to be true, just so you guys know. And I'm mainly digging in very rocky dirt. That was another concern I had with this excavator is does it have the power to dig in rocky soil because I'm in the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> and all the videos that Ron shows, it's dirt and clay and maybe some roots. And all I have here is basically just rocky soil. And it does a great job. It digs through it with no issues so far. So I'm gonna tell you guys my overall impressions on the excavator, things I like, things I'm not crazy about, and then just kind of some final thoughts. So what do I really like about this excavator? Well, a couple things, um, more than a couple things. Uh, I like the price, I think, for what you get with the support and some of the upgraded features that you get with Kimron versus the other auction Chinese excavators out there. I think it's definitely worth it to go with the Kimron over the other ones. Uh, I really like the aspect that you have the hydraulic thumb. That's gonna come in handy greatly here because we have a lot of rocks. I like the aspect I can just pick them up. One thing I really like about this is it's just as powerful or maybe more powerful than I was expecting, which I had heard from some other guys out there that these gas powered uh, excavators are actually really powerful. And so far, this thing has done everything that I've asked it to do. And I'm really looking forward to using it in warmer weather and digging deeper and uh, really putting this thing um, through some good tests uh, in the future. A few other things I like about the excavator, the controls are really good. Uh, just like Ron talks about in his videos, you can operate this thing at just above idle or maybe mid throttle, and you can do all the work that you need with that upgraded pump. I've definitely found that to be true for sure. Uh, with my YH model, I really do like the aspect of the rollover protection system. Like I said, that was one of the main reasons why I got this specific model. I think the size of the excavator is good and it seems very heavy duty for being such a compact small excavator. Um, and that's one of the reasons I got it too is the fact that it is small and compact. It fits in my shipping container. It fits on my trailer, which I already have. I didn't have to upgrade my trailer or anything, but yet it still does a lot of work and it is still very heavy duty which I love that aspect about it. Final couple things I really like about it too is that, uh, you know, the blade works great. I feel like that is very heavy duty. Like I said, that thing is about two inches thick and that's gonna work great with grading our road and just smoothing out and leveling out surfaces. And it's done very well so far, honestly. This also isn't super noisy. I mean, I showed you guys the, the decibel meter. I don't feel like it's super noisy. When you're got a full bore, it, it is like a, a generator. It sounds kind of like that. But if you're going just above idle or mid throttle, it really isn't that noisy, which I do like that aspect. And then probably one of the things I like the most about it is the aspect that you have support and the customer service from Kimron. Like I said, I've had nothing but a good experience with them thus far. So there are a couple of things I'm not crazy about with the excavator. A few of these I did know going into it. I had an idea about these, so I wasn't super surprised, but just so you guys know if you're interested in buying one of these. Uh, the first one, like I talked about already with the foot pedal for the thumb. 
if you have a big foot or if you're a bigger dude, you know, or dude at, you may kind of struggle to operate the foot pedal to control the thumb. Uh, you know, I just have, you know, like work boots up here and I can get my foot in here. I wear a size nine, but you know, it can be a little awkward. Now, Kemron does offer some other models that have a, a uh, hand lever to operate the thumb. So if you are bigger, you may want to consider one of those. One thing that I'm not crazy about with the excavator, but I did know this going into it, this thing is slow. It goes literally probably like a mile an hour. So back here on the back side of our property, uh, we are almost a half mile away from where we store this thing in a shipping container. And versus driving it up here, which would take at least a half hour, I actually just load it up on our trailer and then haul it up here just cause it's a lot quicker. Another thing is the uh, track sticks. Like I said, these aren't the most comfortable. So if you are tracking for a while, they uh, are a little tiring. I guess you could say they're just, they're a little more, more difficult to operate than the other couple excavators that I've operated. And there's no foot pedals, you know, like on bigger excavators, you could also use your feet to drive. With these, it's just these hand levers. And like I said, they can get a little tiring after a while. So really the last thing that I'm not crazy about with the excavator and ultimately is probably the biggest one is the fact that the access to the engine is not as easy as I was thinking it was going to be. Um, you know, the model up from this, uh, I probably would have bought that one because it has panels that open up real nicely, but I didn't get that one because it doesn't have the true rollover protection and it's taller. And I was actually worried about getting it into our shipping container. So I'm sure I'll figure out how to get around that. And I'm sure if you're a mechanic out there, you're probably like, whatever, it's easy to access. You know? <laughs> Mechanics are used to working in tight spots. I'm not a mechanic. So for me, I'm like, oh, it'd be nice to have a panel, but I'm sure I'll be able to figure it out. All right, guys. Well, overall, I've been really happy with the machine thus far. I'm really looking forward to using it here on our property. And I wish it wasn't winter time because right now uh, we just have a little bit of snow and that's not going to stop me from working. But at 10,000 feet here, we can easily get a couple feet and uh, that's going to hinder me from uh, doing much work. So I'll probably be posting more videos on this excavator in the spring and summertime when I'm really using this. But stay tuned for more videos. If you guys uh, enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.